Welcome to my shop. Today we're going to turn this beautiful apple box out of this uh, lovely piece of spalted maple. Uh, I start my day with a little wipe and a little WD-40 on the bedways and around the spindle so the chuck won't lock. I would like to start with a plan. Here's my, my drawing, three and a half inches across and uh, oh, about the same depth. i got to leave room, make sure I've got room for that uh, that little spigot. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of wood, but it, it it's a little bit punky, so there's some going to be some cutting challenges. Sharp tool, slice, uh, mount between centers, bring up the tailstock. I'm going to use a spindle roughing gouge. Ground straight across. Never use this on a bowl. And this tool is a great tool for taking something squared around very quickly. I mark uh, the tenons on each end and then I use my shop made beating and parting tool for a nice tenon on each end. I forgot to hit, get the sound uh, recording properly. It'll turn on here in a minute. Meanwhile I'm doing a voiceover. So I turn it around and we're going to put it in a chuck now. I'm using my normal jaws with my uh, Supernova 2. Tighten it down. And this shows I'm going to make the lid about 40% of the, uh, the, the height of the box. And I've got to make sure, like I say, I leave room for that little bit of a tenon. I'm going to have an in-fitting lid. So I mark it with a pencil. Uh, using these calipers. I use uh, measure it in millimeters to get about 40 percent and then go ahead and mark it where I'm going to part it off. I'm going to start with a thin parting tool. Actually I start with a 1 8 inch so I'll have a little bit of room then I'm going to switch to a 1 16 inch. My regular parting tool is just a little bit uh, the handle's too short for me to really uh, safely cut something this thick, so I switched to a longer handled uh, Sorby fluted uh, parting tool. Meanwhile, I'm continuing with that 1 8 inch. I'm making this this initial part wide enough for that for that tenon on the top. Here's that 1 16th inch parting tool, and then here's the fluted Robert Sorby I'm using. The thin, my short handle thin parting tool works for pieces about two inches or so, but once I get much thicker than that, I'd rather use that longer handle sorby so I've got a little more leverage. And I should have known to use a flush cut saw before it, chased, before it had to chase it around the shop. Now I use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge to start shaping the top. Just coming around, anchor the tool, ride the bevel. Continually move that that handle around so I'll get that nice nice curve and not come off the wood. Come back and refine that cut a little bit. Try to get it just a little bit uh, smoother so I don't have to sand as much. We'll finish the top uh, in a moment. I use a skew just to put a little divot and make it a little easier when I use this uh, hand drill. Quarter of an inch hand drill. Any thicker than that, it's got too much torque. I've got little bitty cuts on it, uh, marks on it, so I can more easily measure it. So I bring up the tail stock. Remove the live center so I don't get Turner's elbow. Now I switch to a larger uh, half inch spindle gouge for hollowing it out. It seems to work a little better on a little larger projects like, like this and I just start down the middle and pivot it as I slice through the wood. Having that depth hole makes it a little easier to anchor that, that tool in there as I do the slice. This wood, because it is a little bit, uh, a little bit punky as, as I'm checking it out, it's just not as smooth as I'd like. So I switched to, to a hunter, 
a cupped carbide tool that will give me a nicer finish. I, I carefully measure the inside so I don't make the inside bigger than the outside. I'm going to have a little bit of a you know a divot in, in the middle so I've got to allow for that. So as I slice through the bottom I leave a little bit of a raised area uh, to facilitate when I drill a hole for, for a stalk because I don't want it to come all the way through. So. Okay, I didn't realize I didn't have my sound on so I had to over force over. So I'm going to start off 150. I'm going to get this surface nice. I'm going to use that by hand. I'm going to slow the speed down a little bit. So about a third of the turning speed. Okay, that's cleaned up nicely. Let's go to the next grip, 240. Now remember, we got to completely finish the inside before we take this off because we won't be able to get back to it again. So I'm going to use abrasive paste to clean up the inside for that final finish. I've already sanded up to 320, and I think for this wood, that's as close as I need, as far as fine a grit as I need. Because the wood's kind of soft, and I'm get a little bit of tear out. So Now, the one more thing I need to do before I take this off, because I won't have a chance to get back to it, I want to make sure that this... I've got a very slight chamfer uh, right here in the corner, so when the top and the bottom meet, there won't they, even if the wood moves a little bit, there should not be a gap. So I'm gonna get that speed up just a little bit. I'm gonna use this as a scraper and just negative break, turn it down just a little bit, and just put it in there just a little bit, put it in the back. And I think I will sand a little bit of this outside right here because I may have wind up having to put tape on it when I put it on the jam and on the bottom. Sand that a little bit. Alright, so that's ready to come off. I think I will double check and mark the outside where the, the bottom is. So I don't know exactly. Okay. I'll, I'll keep this handy, and that way I'll know. All right, so I'm going to take this off and put the uh, bottom on. Now, first thing I want to do is I've got to make a little, enough of a recess in here to jam this on to make sure I get these two surf uh, two two designs to to flow, and then also so I can finish off the top here. So. So, I'm just going to do some scra scraping out for a little bit with this half inch gouge. Get the speed back up again over 1,000, 1,200. to go oops like that there's an oops okay all right so that's an oops but that's the final fit I'm I'm striving for so all I need to do uh, is get this thing jammed where I can finish the this and get the two sides to come together so I'm gonna bring up some tailstock support bring up my soft center I'm using my Nova Live Center with the with a nylon insert that I made. And that way. 
way I can, you know, bring that up a little bit. And, and I'm going to actually take a piece of paper towel to get it really snug. Put that on there. That's going to swell the fibers. I'm just going to rub that on the inside there a little bit. And then we're going to put this in there. And hopefully that will swell the fibers enough to hold it to that final cut on the top. Meanwhile, it will hold it fairly snug while we, we blend these the two edges together here for this box so I'll have a nice continuous edge and I guess I want to go ahead and get my green try to get the green to match anchor the tool, ride the bevel, lift the handle to the cut is yeah, it's loose uh, not real tight but I think tight enough for me to finish getting in there and sanding I may have to hold it a little bit to support it do this one handy I've got to drill a hole there. I'm trying to decide if it comes through. Is that going to be a real issue or not? Um, I don't know. Okay, so we've got to drill... We got to drill a hole at about a 45 degree angle that's going to hold a stem we're going to turn. Um, I can only go just a little ways, so I'm, I'm going to mark it with an awl. Enter right there. It's, uh, wow, pretty close. <laughs> but good looking top I think that uh, stem is going to look nice alright now we can start hollowing the box out I think we can just go ahead and use this hand drill and I want it to go see if I got any marks on this side ok I want to go just a little bit deeper than this mark right here about some <coughs> I'm going to rest my hand here on the tool rest
going to hollow this out a little bit more here. Again, I think I'll switch to that hunter tool because it slices so smoothly. Let me get this in there and do a, do a check. I can go a little bit deeper, but I'll deal with that with that hunter tool. This is definitely not your flat flat carbide. Uh, this is cut uh, cupped. It's mounted on here, so it cuts very similar to a uh, a bowl gouge. And all I got to do is keep it flat on the tool rest. Sanded the inside up to uh, 320. Now I'm going to rub some of this abrasive paste all over in here. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn this around. Put it on a jam chuck. I'm going to go find a suitable piece of wood. Let's look at our my drawer of stuff. I've got plenty of. Fine, but unfortunately, it looks like a 2x4 is not quite wide enough. I need something a little bigger. And I did find a piece of poplar that's a little larger. That'll give me room. It's already on a glue block. It'll fit in a chuck. Let's go ahead and take this box off. Put our jam chuck on. I don't know how long it's been sitting in the drawer. I don't remember doing it, so it's probably been years. Okay, just waiting for the right opportunity to use that scrap. So we're going to uh, just ease this side in here. Not the one, the one. That's pretty close. inch spindle gauge spindle gouge okay I've got all those now I want to use a little uh, abrasive paste one more time Looking for a clean surface, make sure you get it all off. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take that smallest detail gouge I've got, quarter of an inch to, to get, get into that, that area at the bottom. I could probably use a skew, but frankly I'm still more comfortable with this. At this point, before I go chasing around the floor, I'm going to go ahead and use a flush cut saw. And just, just saw it off and then we'll finish with a little bit of sandpaper. Just back this off a little bit. And there we go. So far, grain match. I think it's looking good. Now we got to put a, a stem or a stalk in it, so let's do that. Okay, I wanted to use a, uh, some type of exotic hardwood, and I have a choice between this. Um, I forget what this is. Uh, this is a piece of ebony, and I think with the coloration of the box, the black is going to look best. So I'm going to use this very small drive center I recently acquired. So I'm going to get this speed up. Just take very light cuts. I go over to the collet chucks on the wall and see if I can't find one that, that will fit. And 
And there's one that looks good. That's the beauty of having extra collets. You don't have to worry about measuring as long as you get it within a range. You've got a nice range of collets. So a collet chuck is great for holding round, round blanks of different sizes. This is an industry standard ER32 collet, which goes up to, oh, about seven-eighths of an inch, I think. Pop it in. And thread it on. This one, I did a review on this particular one. If you're interested in that, I'll have a link above. It's a very nice accessory if you do as much spindle stuff as I do of all different sizes and types of projects. If you're a bowl turner, eh, not so much. Tommy bars. I'm using rolling this over like a skew, riding the bevel to kick the tool, lift the handle till it cuts. At an angle of about 45 degrees, so I'm just going to support it with my finger and get that angle closed. This gives this little stalk a very unique. I could probably sand this, but I may sand it anyway, but I'll go ahead and cut off a chunk of it so I don't have to breathe the sanding dust. Okay, this guy is 964, so that gives me a feel for how small I've got to take this down on the end. A little bit smaller than that. Measure this. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's there. Okay, so now all i got to do is, is sand this to a really fine, fine polish. which is a possibility in exotics build up heat. And this reduces that chance of doing that. Another good reason for using the sanding wire. I'm going to do it fairly lightly. Just let the sandpaper do the work. So just to hold my fingers on it, just to get this thing. I'm not going to turn this too fast. So I want to control it. Sanding striations from that 120 grit or 100 grit wheel. Wax won't interfere much with the finish if you get it all off, but it would definitely interfere with the glue. Sometimes these natural resins in some of these woods interfere with the glue. You almost need to, need to wipe them off with. Uh, Acetone. So let's see how that how that fits. If I got it drilled about right, I think that looks. That's going to work. That's going to work great. So there's the there's the apple box. I'm very pleased with it. Hope you enjoyed this, this project with this apple box. If you want something a little bit simpler turning uh, fruit that's just not a box, you might uh, click on that, that video that I've got, got up here on, on turning fruit. Just remember, y'all stay safe and come on back here.